Let's just keep that real, uh, real marathon going. Hell yeah. We got some clubs going. That's what these shows go. Pretty shows go. Just some planks and side planks. Yo, look, it's candy. You. <laughs> it's very dark. At the no one is visible. Oh, it's always. Oh, back you. Yeah. No, you'll be in the back with, our, uh, with her uh, after this, alright? Here it is! Oh yeah. <laughs> Mate, we want to stop at the top of the hill in case Dunk wants to jump for the first one or two, okay? Just for experience. So, we're not going fast. And there's no hell which will kick the shit out of you. Let's, let's fucking do this, guys. Felix in front. My other two homeboys. So Zen, can you run us through quickly today's plan? Just yeah. So we've just finished the warm up, done about four and a half k um, with the coach and with the <laughs> with the young blood, and yeah, me and my guys we're gonna do some stretching now, some drills. We've got 35 k ahead. It's just to finish 35. Um, no specific time set, no no pace set. We're climbing from around 29 to 3,360 meters. Sure. Mostly uphill, and then on the way back, it's going to be mostly sloped down. So I haven't measured the route exactly. We don't know exactly where we're finished, but it's just a bit of fun and just a bit of a aerobic today while putting something in the legs too. This run um, compared to the the great Kenyan philosopher. Philosopher ain't shit, I tell you. Epic. Yeah. How was the run up, guys? The warm up? The warm up was tough. It was pretty much all uphill. Um, and breathing is a lot harder than the 10. Uh huh. And um, even that took me a week to get used to the altitude there. So I think it'll take at least two weeks to get used to this one. <laughs> Epic. Yeah, you can make a total difference, eh? Yeah. No, it was tough. I think the best bit there was when. We had already ran up three hills <laughs> and then Zane says, Sea dog, here comes your first incline and I was like, I've already ran up three. <laughs> I think they just don't they just don't count some of the small hills, they only count the big massive ones, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That's awesome. What are these shoes? Hey, these are the, the Dyna Blast. Sweet. They're a smaller cut version to the Nova Blast. Um, I find they are the perfect shoe for fartlek or long runs or even fast long runs like on a on a rough road. Okay. I don't wear carbon plate shoes on rough roads because you can hit rocks. The grip's not great. You'll slide on the sand or you'll um, roll your ankle quite easy. But these, they bend with the rocks. Really, really nice for rough road running. Jojo. Long way up, man. Yeah. You and Tim are running partners, me and Felix, we're on the twos. We'll just let you know when we need help. Alright then, we're gonna get started. Colin, sit this on the side of Candy.
So it's just about surviving the distance and going uphill the whole way. Yeah, look at that view. Comfy up there guys. This is the way to ride. This is the way to ride. Ridiculously scenic. Oh, no. Jump the other side, you get the forest. Yeah. Started climbing. <laughs> Started climbing to towards 3,360 meters altitude. Dude, some of these hills are not gradual either. Uh, a lot of up and then down and then up and then down. Yeah. This one will be gradual as fuck, but it's going to be a long way. We're on our way up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're still going up. You see those things? We're still going up. Up there. Let's go. Yeah, good. Yeah, you can just stick it in my hand here. Yeah. So we just crossed the border from Marrakech to West Pakot in the altitude 3183 meters. And we're going up. Dude, it's been nuts how much uphill we've just covered. I mean, hanging. We ain't done yet. And these hills are steep. I think this kind of stuff's much harder because there's no like there's no chance to get into any kind of rhythm. It goes up, down, up, down, but mostly up. And we started a much higher altitude. So the breathing and the cardiovascular benefits are already up. That's why it's important we don't push so hard. Because this can leave you drained for a week or two. A lunch chance. Yeah, boy. There you go. Hey, Colin, guys. Any comments on the route so far? It's crazy. The boys are looking good. They're, they're doing such a good job. This is so tough. We've climbed so much. What, four or five hundred meters already. It's insane. So I think we must be nearly at, nearly at the highest point. Yeah, the guys are doing amazing. And what do you think of Zane's backyard? Zane's backyard, it's just stunning, isn't it? The views are unbelievable. Like, this is sick, absolutely sick. It's honestly insane.
check these hills. All covered in indigenous trees as well, forest, every now and then some farms. It's honestly ridiculously beautiful. And today is crisp, crisp, crisp. Now if you want to come the other side and get the view as well. Got more climbing to do after there. Decent. Dude, my mind is so blown. We're at 33, 29 meters. I'll shoot. Back up there. Now we're on tar road for how long? And about 1k we're turning down and uh, we're about to start our descent.
How much to go, guys? Uh, two and a half, Jay. Two and a half. Smashers. Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah. yeah! Yes, guys! Killing it! That was one of the most incredible runs I've ever watched. Bruin, put it there. Sorry. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah. That's good. That's perfect. Okay. Uh, I saw you started. You did the corner and I saw Felix's legs. Like, Sounds going good. Uh, I know, I do. I told you it's finishing up now. 405 average. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> now you can come here and check this. It says I'm productive in my training. <laughs> I, I believe the watch and everything. <laughs> I mean, 405 per kilometer. But man, that's like a 315 and more then, like very easily. Dude, that was, I think it's just the change of gradient that made it, makes that super hard. Mm. First, like, total elevation gain. Yeah. <laughs> how high you are above sea level. Yeah. And that change in gradient. Yeah, I think the hardest part, people always underrate the downhill because of the impact. I mean, you're going downhill for quite some time and you've got uphills again and rolling hills above 3,000 meters, it really takes it, uh, takes it out of you. Yeah. And I'm gonna get some recovery and we go to the ice bath. Sweet. So what's the difference between drinking a Coke five minutes after your workout compared to like maybe five hours after your workout? Um, by five hours, you've already recovered. Um, the glycogen absorption is different. Right now, within like, how long would you say, 30 minutes? 30 minute window to get your initial glycogen in. Yeah, so when the muscles are basically emptied of glycogen, that's when they want to soak it all up. So you take that sugar back in, it's just going straight into the muscle, getting ready for the next run, recovery. Yeah. So you, yeah. Could, you could go for like a sports drink or whatever, but really what's got the most sugar in the world, man? And what do you like to taste after a long run? Shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> shit in ya. Not promotion, by the way. <laughs> not yet. Cole, you want to Nah, I'm not gonna. What's Cole, no ice bath for you? I don't think I deserve it. I don't merit an ice bath. I'm just gonna check the blisters out. See if they're bad. Do they feel bad? Oh, they feel bad. Is your prediction? Ah, uh, they'll come out later. Superficial. Ah, uh, yeah. It's all that jarring downhill. Time is starting. <laughs> hey, uh, young blood. Yes. Just come and um. I think there's a seat next to next to Tom. Yeah. Frogs, tadpoles. Ah, fuck. The blisters, man. Hey. Yeah. Well. Please. Hey. Yo, yo. You ready? Hey. Yeah. 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 Sit your ass down, man. <laughs> go Candy! Go Candy! I'm floating, I can't go in. <laughs> go Candy! Oh yes! Oh yes! Hit him! Yes! <laughs> Hit him under, man! Under! Uh, started yelling at me. Uh, yes. yeah, yeah, he yelled at me, so that's what he did at me more. So the idea behind this morning's session was to put the guys through a long run at a higher than normal altitude. So E10 being 2,400 metres, which is high and, and challenging to run any 10, as you know. So out here we started at about 2.7 and went all the way up to about 3,300 metres, which is super, super high. So really, really thin air. So when we talk about thin air, it basically as you go higher and higher, the, the air pressure reduces. 
So you've still got the same ratio of oxygen, nitrogen and carbon dioxide in the air, but because there's less air overall, there's less oxygen, so it makes the breathing obviously really, really difficult. And then doing the exercise, doing the running, it's all about oxygen delivery to the muscles because the muscles are screaming for that oxygen to generate energy. And then the body's got different ways of adapting to that. So like we always talk about training at altitude to increase red blood cells. So when you increase the red blood cells in haemoglobin, that carries the oxygen in the bloodstream to the muscles. Mm -hmm. So that's the first adaptation. Then you get the cardiac output from the heart because the heart's the pump, pumping the blood around the body. So the strength of the heart increases. And then you also get a thing called capillarization. So that's basically the gateways from the bloodstream into the muscle. So if you get increased gateways into the muscle, we can get more oxygen into the muscle that way. And then the muscle fibres or the muscle cells develop more of what we call mitochondria. And that's the part of the muscle cell that generates the energy or the powerhouse. So you've basically got those four adaptations that are happening at a faster rate because we're in that thinner air up at high altitude. Mm -hmm. So the thinking behind doing it was that when you train super high, obviously the heart rate comes up, you get all the cardiovascular benefits without having to run so fast. So you don't have that mega force that running fast produces through the legs. So it's still challenging in the legs because you saw the terrain, it was like that. It's crazy, up and down, up and down. It was so nuts. It was amazing, it was amazing. So it still gives the legs a good workout, but without that constant force from running fast all the time. So they get the cardiovascular benefits and the adaptations but the legs don't get such a hard pounding. But the legs are still working, there's still strength gain, there's still huge benefits for the huge legs. Huge amounts of strength. It's a real, <coughs> real strength and endurance session because covering 35 kilometres over that terrain is just insane. Constantly up and down. I think Zane said in one of his clips that the downhills give the legs a hammering as well because you're essentially keeping the brakes on in the downhills. Yeah, your quads are working super hard on those downs for sure. Super hard, super hard. So yeah, these guys will be hammered for days after that. <laughs> I think so. Seriously impressive stuff. I think so. Seriously that, impressive. That was one of the most impressive I think I've seen. Amazing. I, I, I super enjoyed seeing that run. Like, it was awesome, wasn't it? It was just brilliant fun. Yeah. Can you talk maybe about a little bit maybe how does the, the effort as you go higher change like compared to compared to E10 this is obviously a bit higher is it way way harder like I mean we're a thousand meters higher than E10 here basically at the highest point yeah. of the run yeah. um, but does that make it what I'm trying to say is it's an exponential it's a, it's, effort right? I would say it was like I've been up at this kind of height before but that's the first time I've ran so we just jumped in for the a 4k warm-up, which was like an easy jog. And uh, yeah, I was, I was breathing heavily at, at an easy jogging pace. Mm. So I would say, like, I mean, in terms of E10 to here, like, to give the guys at home a, a, a bit of a, a kind of gauge, so at sea level I can run like a 15 minute 5k. At E10, I, it's, it's hard, I can probably run about 18, 19 minutes at E10. Up here, judging from that warm up, I'd probably, I, I think I'd probably to run like 20, 21, maybe even 22 minutes for a 5k up here. Really? It was that difficult. Energy sapping, the legs were wobbling, the legs were getting weak just because there's not enough oxygen getting there to generate the energy. But, and that was in a 4k jog. So for these guys to run that 35k, up and down and up and down. Uh, the camera probably won't do it justice, some of those things. I don't think so. Up, 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 up. The four-wheel drive vehicle was struggling to get up some of those inclines, <laughs> and they went on and on and on. So yeah, I'm just super impressed by the workout from all of them. Yeah, yeah, that no, was amazing. Really good. And uh, what, is, what is your relationship with Zane? Zane, so I met Zane probably 2015. Um, but we actually 2014 Commonwealth Games when Zane won his bronze medal in Glasgow, my home city. I was in the stadium watching that. <laughs> And uh, it was it was a really great night, and everyone was kind of like taken back, like he's this New Zealand guy challenging the Kenyans and taking a taking a medal in the five thousand. And then when I first came out to to Kenya, um, Jake and Zane were two of the first guys I met when we came out here, and we kind of got friendly in that way. Um, and then ever since then, you know, um, through that kind of friendship and relationship, we've developed a kind of training relationship as well with my physiology and coaching background. So. He kind of comes to me, I'd, I'd say I'm his kind of go-to guy if he, if he needs kind of a bit of advice or a bit of help with his training. Okay. So it's good, good fun. At the moment he's self-coached? 
he coaches himself, so he, he, he kind of develops a plan, sends it to me and says, what do you think about this? And we sometimes make a few little tweaks and stuff. But he does a good job with it, aye, he does a good job. Sweet. He's learnt so much from being out here. You don't, you don't learn this stuff from textbooks. No. You know, you learn it from being out here and doing it. And that's what Jake and Zane have done. Super impressed with the way they've built up their knowledge over the last... I've seen, I've seen a huge development over the last five or six years in both of them. Like, smart guys, they, they really study running. And they really do, they, they learn a lot about it. Impressive yeah. stuff. <laughs> I can feel, feel stepping down. Okay, I'm man. stepping really high. I mean, look, look at the feet. You see the feet are going like slightly red now. Yeah. Hey man, when you get in the car, they'll be like, just shooting blood through. Perfect for circulation. The only better thing would be having a sauna like right here. So you can go straight from the cold to the ice heart. Warm, ice warm, ice warm. Oh yeah. yeah. Candy out of 10. Relaxed. 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 No, no, no. Dead. Now, confirm. <laughs>